The rename panel in Basehead has two main functions. Firstly, the transfer tab is where we can set up how we want our files in use to be named when we're transferring between Basehead and our target application. When we're using features such as the drag and drop function, transfer or spot to track, and adding to the tag list. Now for versions of Basehead that also include the battery naming feature, you will note the batch tab, which allows us to battery name our files and batch update details in the database. Now, if you're an existing Basehead user, you will probably notice some changes around the rename panel here since as of version 2020, the batch processing functionality has been completely overhauled. It now offers a new powerful rules-based approach to batch renaming your data. So first we'll have a look at the transfer panel and how it is used, and then we'll have a look at the new features of the batch processing panel. Okay, so to access the rename panel, we simply click the rename tab down here. Now the first uh, panel we're greeted with is the transfer panel. So this controls the naming of our files as we're working with them and transferring them into other applications. So using any of the features such as the drag and drop features or spot to track, transfer to track, things like that. Uh, anytime we're sending the file to another application, typically what Basehead is doing is it's making a copy of that file. Now, the reason we need to make a copy is so that Basehead can apply whatever processing or whatever selection we've made within a particular file. Now, the transfer tab controls the naming of these files. So by default, Basehead will just use the file name of the original file, make a copy, and the new file will inherit the file's name. Now we can control this and uh, select the description instead of the file name. For whatever reason, we might want to use the description to label our files instead of the file name. We can even use a combination of file name and description to label the file. Now we also have an additional optional setting that we can activate, which adds some pre and post text and gives us the option to clean up some of the formatting in the file name. So with this enabled, we get an extra indicator here on the rename tab to indicate that this section is enabled and this will modify the file accordingly. So the pre and post text allows us to add a text tag to the front or the rear of our file. Now this might be useful for uh, the fact that we're making a copy of a file, we might want to actually add a tag to say that this is a copy. So if we come across this file in a project, uh, because it's got the copy tag on the end, this will indicate to us that we've made a copy. It may not be the exact same as the original file. And then we've got a replace section here. So the replace term here, we can uh, find a word in the file name and replace it with another. We also then have the option to remove some formatting. So for instance, we can uh, remove any duplicate words or remove non-alphanumeric characters or non-ASCII characters, um, remove numbers from our file name. We then also have the option to remove spaces from the file name. And if you're a Mac user, you will also notice an additional option that allows you to remove any uh, illegal characters for Windows so that uh, files can be made uh, Windows compatible as well. And then finally, we have the option to reduce the file name length. So if we want to keep the file name under a particular length, then we can set which length we want the file name to conform to. So as an example, what I'll do is I'll just uh, transfer this file that I've got here to my tag list. So we can see that it's been added to the tag list here and it has simply added the copy option onto the end along with the other formatting that I've, uh, I've applied. It's removed the numbers for me. And so that's pretty much the purpose of the transfer panel. It only affects the names of files that are being copied. So it doesn't make any changes to the original files at all. It's only when we're working with files that, uh, that this applies. So let's now have a look at the new features of the batch processing panel. Okay, so the batch tab is where we can process the naming of files and also batch update the details in our database. So this new batch renaming feature replaces the previous feature in Basehead, which was called the offline renamer. It's basically the same thing, but with a lot more added functionality. So this will work on whatever files we have selected in our results list. So before we get started, what we want to do is select a range of files or use the filtering to display a results list of what files we want to work with. Then we would have to select the range of our files that we want to apply to and then apply the batch processing. But to get started while we're building the rules for our renaming string, what we want to do is just select a single file and then that way we can see the preview 
of the file in the window here. Now there are three main sections to the batch processing window. First of all, we have the source or the rules section. What we do is slot in rules, that builds our string, and then that will be applied to our destination. So the destination is what field or file name uh, do we want to apply the string to? And then we have what's called the functions and presets section. So this is built in functions for common things such as copying the file name to description and things like that. And then we have user presets. So this is where we can save any existing rules combinations as our own preset. So let's have a look at the rules themselves. So what I'll do is just delete the uh, first one that we've got here. You'll see that I have no output preview because we don't have any rules to construct anything. Uh, up the top here, we have the add clear rules buttons. That simply allows us to select a rule, clear the list of rules, and then we have a save and load button. This allows us to save our preset. The presets will appear down here and load allows us to load uh, an external preset. So we might have been sent a preset file. When we click the uh, load button, it allows us to locate the preset file. So just as a note, the preset files themselves are actually saved in our base head directory under the uh, presets folder, under the battery naming folder. So the first rule we look at is the source database field. This allows us to take any database field and use that in our string. So as we can see here, we've got the description field. This is now pulling the description from a database. Uh, I can go through and select uh, any database field that uh, is applicable to renaming. So you'll see here that I can uh, come down, let's maybe um, select the keywords field or the subcategory field. So whatever fields we have populated in our database, uh, we can use those to place in our string. Next, we have a strip rule. Now the strip rule is used to strip characters or remove spaces, clear text, things like that. Uh, so what we can do is remove all the spaces from a string. Uh, we can uh, remove any duplicate words. So if a word exists twice, strip it out of the string. Uh, we also have the option to decap and recap. So if we have a mixture of uppercase, lowercase, and we just want to wipe it all out and then just put in a uh, title case like we've got here, uh, we have that option. Uh, remove non-ASCII and non-alphanumeric characters. Uh, remove the numbers in our string. So we might want to strip out any numbers that exist there at the moment. Uh, trim the spaces at the head or the tail. So if there's any spaces at the start or the end of the string, we can trim those off. And then we've got the clear text option, which will take whatever source field that we've got here and just clear it. Now we also have the option to trim X number of characters from the front or rear of the string. So if we need to delete the loop off of all of our file names, we could uh, go to the tail and delete those six characters or however many characters, seven characters. Uh, the next rule we've got is the case rule. So the case rule allows us to set everything to uh, decap recap, just like the uh, strip option. Uh, but we also have the option to make the uh, entire string lowercase, uppercase, or the uh, title case that we've got there. The next option we have is the replace rule. So the replace rule can find a term and replace it with another term or delete it completely. So previously where I was saying we could delete the loop off the end, what we could also do is simply type in loop and that will now delete it off the, uh, the end as well. If we want to lock it down to being case sensitive, we can select the option there as well. Uh, next we have the free text rule. So the free text rule here allows us to enter in any free text that we like. So we might want to put on just the word tag. Uh, but what it also allows us to do is insert any fields from our database into our string. So this can be quite helpful if we want to create a custom string using several different fields. Now we can obviously add things like um, the source database field and just keep adding those in. But to make it a little bit easier, what we could do is let's say I want to put the microphone field on the end. And we can see that uh, putting it in the square brackets and typing in the name of the field, it will add this at the position in our string. So I could put the microphone and then I might want to put the category. So put in a dash. 
And we can see that it adds on this information into our string in the way that we've put it. And then we've got the number rule. Now the number rule allows us to generate a list of numbers. So for whatever range we have selected, we can start our numbering at whatever start point we put, and then it will increase our numbers all the way until the end of our selection. And so what I might want to do is create a three digit number. So let's say we want to make a three digit number and we want to start at uh, number 10. So this might be when numbering particular files and we need to continue the numbering sequence. We can also add uh, a prefix to the front and a suffix to the end to uh, encapsulate it in a bracket or something like that. Okay, now what we can also do is uh, we have the delete buttons here, so we can actually delete the uh, rules if we don't need them. We can also reorder the rules. So if I need to put the numbering at the start of my file, for instance, I can grab this rule, drag it to the top, and it will now place it at the front. So I might find that uh, I should have a space between it. I can put a space in there, drag that in there, and reorder them as we need to. Now, once we've got a string set up the way that we like it, we then move over to the destination option. Now, the destination option allows us to select a field in our database. So we can select any of the appropriate fields in our database to write to. We also have the option to write to the file name as well. So this will update both the file name in the database and actually rename the physical file itself. We then have the replace mode option. So are we going to replace the existing information with the string that we have down the bottom there? Or do we want to add it to the front of our destination or the end of our destination information? And then we have a separator character for if we're adding it to a string. So if we're concatenating the string or joining the strings together, then we can separate the information from our source string by using one of the uh, separator characters. And then finally, we come to the functions and the presets section. So the function section is just some common functions such as we want to take the file name and apply it to the description or vice versa. Selecting one of the uh, built-in functions will load up the rules and load up the destination for us automatically. Now any of the rules that we've saved as a preset, so if we click the save button it allows us to type in a name, the saved preset will then appear in our presets list. Any of the presets that appear in the list here we can find in the presets folder. If we want to remove a preset, we just simply delete the XML file. And so selecting a preset will load the rules and allow us to process it. And that pretty much covers everything to do with the new rename panel.